Okay, so if we're happy with how the, uh, the calipers will set up on our, on our bike, um, we can now take a look at some of the other problems we might be experiencing with a braking system. Um, the purpose of running through it like this is to make sure that mechanically everything's set up nicely and we can start to diagnose any hydraulic problems we may have. So on the lever side of things, a quick visual inspection. We want to make sure nothing on the reservoir cap is cracked. We want to make sure that all appropriate bolts and, and fixtures are going to be tight. We want to also check in here that we don't have any hydraulic fluid weeping um, from this joint. So assuming that stuff all looks pretty good, we can give a couple of squeezes on the brake lever. It should feel, you know, nice and firm. It should come to a really positive, like, stop as the pads come into full contact with the rotor. If at this point we're feeling like there's a lot of sponge and we're able to push the lever further back into the, the bars, that's indicative of the brake needing a hydraulic bleed. Um, again, if we get one sort of lever feel, if we pull the brake like that, but if we pump it repeatedly, that lever feel changes. That's indicative of there being air somewhere in the brake system, um, and again, would indicate that we needed a hydraulic bleed. Um, so basically, once you've isolated the mechanical components of the disc brake, uh, anything that gives you uh, an inconsistent lever feel, means you're able to triage this as being a hydraulic problem, um, and you're either looking at a master cylinder replacement or sometimes just a straightforward bleed. Um, the final step on using this brake system um, is obviously going to be to, to run the brake um, on the stand, and make sure we don't have any unpleasant noises as the brake's operating, and then finally to do a road test of the bike um, and make sure that there's no weird noises uh, and that it's, it's remaining a consistent lever feel. Um, if we are getting, you know, strange uh, noises coming from the brake system combined with an absence of power, that's often connected to a contaminants on the brake rotor or on the brake pads. So that could be another problem that'll, that'll haunt you with a, with a system like this. But we want to isolate the mechanical aspects of things, then look at the hydraulics, and finally consider if, if it might be a contaminated pad or rotor and uh, address that issue. So having reviewed some of the setup issues with the disc brake system, uh, I'm now gonna show you some specifics uh, of what a worn out component might look like. Um, this is a good example of a brake rotor um, that has been massively overheated um, and it's also the pads in this instance will run right down to the, the steel backing plate. So the for some of this brake's life, it was a steel-on-steel -steel braking system, which would have sounded awful. Um, and you can also see the amount of damage that that's caused to this, uh, this braking surface. A lot of discoloration, a lot of scoring. Um, if you put fresh pads on this braking system, uh, it would still not operate correctly. Um, we'll take a look at a fresh brake rotor. So that's what a, a rotor should look like. Uh, you can see a smooth, uh, nicely finished surface there. And by contrast, the old rotor with a lot of scoring, discoloration, and damage on there. Uh, always be wary when handling uh, disc brake rotors that if you're going to be touching the braking surface, you want to have a set of clean nitrile gloves on, because otherwise you will leave uh, contaminants, oils from your, from your fingers, from whatever else you've been touching uh, on the rotor. Um, in this instance, this rotor is completely trashed, so we're not that concerned about that but definitely with new stuff that's worth thinking about. You'll also see on most brake rotors a minimum thickness uh, figure is on there. Um, so with any braking system that's older, shows obvious signs of wear and tear, a good idea to just take some calipers and actually assess the thickness of that material because failure to respect that minimum thickness can lead to a catastrophic failure of the, the braking system, which you want to avoid.